A decade is ending that will become known as the Roaring Twenties. It's 1929 and Americans enjoy unprecedented prosperity. Herbert Hoover begins his first term as president with the nation in a decidedly upbeat mood. In New York City, construction begins on the Empire State Building. That will become the tallest in the world. Bell Lab experiments with color television. And Kodak releases 16 millimeter color motion picture film to the public. Silent motion pictures are giving way to the talkies, and even the newsreels add the voice of a commentator midway through the year. The World War has been over since the end of 1918, and now Allied occupation troops are beginning to leave for home. Americans and people in the rest of the world feel safe and secure. Peace and prosperity rule. But there are unsettling rumblings in Europe. In Italy, Premier Benito Mussolini is flexing his political muscles, and Adolf Hitler in Germany is strengthening his Nazi party. And in October, the American stock market collapses. The crash at home and the rise of dictators abroad will change the history of the world. This and much more is the year 1929. Let's watch.
Pat is the holder of 15 national titles and a couple of Olympic championships, and he is swinging a 56-pound weight. Pat is no spring chicken, but these slow-motion pictures show that the old boy is certainly there, to the tune of 14 feet, 9 inches, mighty close to the record. Of course, it had to be a nice cold day when they pulled off this race, and they didn't heat the water either. Watch this last boy take a splash. It makes a shiver even to think about it. Now you can see how your ancestors dressed down through the ages. Some of them must have had frostbitten knees. On the end, you'll see what the tailors are planning for us. Short pants and no collars. Gosh, we all look like little boys. The next picture gives you a close-up of the man of the future. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. There's one good thing about these short pants. They won't cost much, and you don't have to have them pressed. But when the wintry winds do blow, oh man. Pajamas for the summer, shorts for the winter. That's the program. Take your pick, because the tailors say that men's styles have to change, and what they say generally goes. Maybe they look funny to you, but the way we dress now would have looked mighty queer to the bozos who lived a hundred years ago. Here's a symbol of the fountain of youth. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Some pie, but look at the rolling pin. Some wives would just love to have that little playmate in the house. This pie took 125 bushels of apples, 600 pounds of flour, 500 pounds of sugar, and 10 dozen eggs. Watch this crowd go to it. These kids are having a treat of their young lives because most of them have poor parents who can't afford to buy much pie. In a moment, you'll meet the champion lady pie swallower in Albion. Not a bellyache in a wagon load, said the baker, when he handed her this shovelful. Each seadrome is a fifth of a mile long and 30 times bigger than this model. Soon, we'll be able to get into an airplane and hop to Europe in 100-mile jumps. Each seadrome will carry gas, oil, and water. The water will be free. The inventor hopes they will work. We hope he gets his hope. We feel sure that you're going to say this is one of the greatest Navy pictures you ever saw. This amazing demonstration proves that a big ship can be protected from attacks of enemy ships and airplanes with the help of smoke screens. It also shows that planes can be taken far from land and use the ocean as a base of operations. A hundred airplanes and 20 destroyers took part in these maneuvers. This is a practical demonstration of the wonderful way that this giant vessel could keep out of sight and at the same time take care of her brood of planes. You see her dimly through the smoke, while every now and then a flyer darts out to hunt the imaginary enemy. At the same time, a blanket of fog is kept going. These are the first pictures ever shown of this quick stopping device that was first brought out by our Navy. See how beautifully the planes come to a stop in less than half their own length. We're proud of our Navy that upholds the flag on every ocean in the world. Madame Curie and her late husband discovered radium, the only known cure for cancer. Radium is so rare that there is less than a pound in the whole world. Friends gave her this money to continue her great work fighting the disease. Some bungalow. Now, let's take a look inside. It's the first time a cameraman was ever allowed to take pictures here. The girls are all made up with white paste, like flour, and those headdresses are of solid bronze. It takes them two hours to make up. This man is the clown of the show. His mask is supposed to make everybody laugh. Here's the devil. How'd you like to meet up with him in a dark alley? 
the 1929 Siamese Follies have started, and they last over five hours. The girls wear costumes that weigh 60 pounds each. No wonder they move around so slowly. The dancers are paid high salaries and are taught their steps while they're still babies. The devil tries to catch one of the girls. They all get away except White Lotus, but she fools him. She carries a magic crystal which keeps away evil. Every time he tries to get her, she waves the crystal and he has to duck. I'd like to have one of those when the installment man comes around. They're back in their regular clothes, and now you know what the young girl will wear in Siam this winter. Talk about your traffic jams. They're not in it with this one, and it seems to be one-way traffic, too. We never knew there were so many geese in the whole world. It takes about two pounds of mash to feed each bird, which means that the farmer has to deal out 10,000 pounds a day. No wonder goose is so high when Christmas comes. I've heard of a cattle drive and a sheep drive, but this is the first goose drive I've ever seen. The dinner bell. Look at those bobbing backs. Doesn't it make you dizzy? Oh, what a jam! It's a wonder those posts don't go down. This picture's making me hungry. I can't help thinking what a little stuffing, some cranberry sauce, nice brown gravy and mashed potatoes would taste like with some nice juicy goose alongside. I'll have to stop. My tummy's getting weak. Here we are sailing over Wrigley Field, which on this day was the mecca for every baseball lover. 35 years old, and I understand this is his last season. This great pitcher certainly covered himself with glory. Connie and Joe, two of baseball's foremost managers. Oh, what a start for the athletics. The ball has disappeared, and it's never coming back. Watch that boy run. His homer was a high fly into the center field bleachers. Philly fans are wild as he tears around the bases. That home run must have tickled the Judge Pink because he is one of the best little rooters in the country. The battle goes on, but the game is in the bag for the athletics. Old man Emke certainly did his stuff, and he made baseball history. A tough day for the home team fans. Too bad, but it's all in the game. Once a year, some of the big guns in the government come to see the big guns in Uncle Sam's army. At these demonstrations, experts are able to judge the progress made in the artillery and select the best types for future use. The biggest aerial bomb ever made, even during the Great War. They are using real shells and bombs. The planes are supposed to be the enemy and are on a bombing raid. These great guns throw a shell weighing a ton for 30 miles and in spite of their size can be fired once a minute. At last the anti-parking law is solved and also the garage problem. At night, you can keep this auto at the foot of the bed, and when you go for a visit, you can take it apart and carry it right with you. If you run out of gas, your wife can use it for a necklace. Well, there it is. More worry for the traffic cops. Will it work? Just watch. Don't laugh. It goes 80 miles an hour, and that's more than your car can do.
If this baby wants to fly an airplane when she grows up, it's a cinch she'll pass the dizzy test. Talk about a bouncing baby. She doesn't care what happens to her. And just think, she's only a little more than a year old. She's got more nerve than I have. This is how the stunt would look to a grasshopper. Ramona's daddy thinks it's a great way to make a child have confidence in her father. We agree she's got to have lots of it, and then some. Maybe he's practicing to be a juggler. But she's a great kid. Look at her. She's enjoying every minute of it. Oh, 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 look at her run and see how strong she is. You're a brave baby, Ramona. If we had young Mr. Opal's money, we'd never go near one of the darn things. But he risked his life three times in one day to prove it would fly. Off she goes with the rocket shooting out flame and smoke. But something goes wrong and the power fails to raise the machine. Mr. Opal takes a rest for a while and then decides to try it again. He says that someday this machine will hop to America in six hours. Once more, it dashes along the runway, but the wires that set off the rockets with an electric spark become crossed and the plane stops. This time he succeeds and you see one of the most amazing flights ever made. Universal Newsreel always shows you the latest surprises. Watch our next issue for some more. You are now looking at one of the chief prides of Mussolini, his highly efficient police force. What a fine body of men and how they can march. Instead of horses, the police who ride are on bicycles and motorcycles. They hand out tickets in Rome, just like they do here, and there are strict laws against speeding. The force depends a whole lot on its police dogs, which are trained like bloodhounds to trail lawbreakers and guard property. Every police station has one of these fast motor trucks ready to dash out with the reserves. Italy's man of the hour. His policemen must look and act like soldiers, which is why he gives them this close inspection. Mussolini believes in personally rewarding his brave cops who risk their lives in the course of duty. The people of Rome never before saw a police review like this. Mussolini likes the spectacular, and to show the crowds the full strength of their police force, he had the whole 5,000 march in one big group. You can always depend on Mussolini to put on a good show. These girls have been the sensation of continental Europe and have just been personally engaged by Universal Pictures. Talk about hot. Well, wait till you see him on the screen next year in King of Jazz. This contest brought the winner six pairs of shoes and a loving cup besides. There were exactly 3,000 applications or 6,000 feet. At last, the judges weeded out the canal boats and the violin cases and picked this bunch for their final decision. Nellie's foot size is 3B, a good understanding. What do people do with loving cups anyhow? Here's a big rush on the free lunch counter. Look at those tails. Let's hope the milk supply holds out in Los Angeles or these bottle hounds will be out of luck. This is the second litter from the mother of these dogs and there were 10 in the first. Must be the California climate. There's nothing like it. Did anybody ever see a bunch of waiters move as fast as this? Not in any restaurant. 
They're always hanging around until you want something, and then you have to get out a search warrant for them. These fellows have to walk or run two miles through the Paris streets without stubbing their toes or spilling a frog's leg. The one who wins can keep the bottle of wine he's carrying. Now get ready for a real thrill at one of the best games of the season and one of the big upsets that made the wise guys feel foolish. Down on the Oval, the cadets are making their grand show. It's always a wonderful sight to see these boys march in perfect time, and there are 1,200 of them there. Look at that crowd and try to find an empty seat if you can. There they go. Watch this clash of muscle against muscle with the Army boys pushing back the Yale Bulldog at the start. The next is a fast play that ends in a fumble. Now they're getting ready again. Watch this one. He's making a nice run of it, but is forced out of bounds. Whoops, look out there. Now you're going to see Cagle make a wonder 45-yard dash right down to Yale's goalposts. Watch him run. It looks bad for old Eli. Watch this little fellow go through those army giants. Can you imagine a boy weighing only 144 pounds and only five feet six inches tall getting through that line? Touchdown! If we ever had another war, which I hope we don't, you'll see every battleship carrying scout planes. They'll be the eyes of the fleet. Admiral Lanning waits until each plane is safely in the air and a considerable distance away, and then orders another one off to look for the enemy. They must leave at high speed or else they would drop into the water as the runway is only 40 feet. Also, they must take off against the wind. I wonder how many of us think about our unfortunate brothers on Thanksgiving Day. Most of these men are willing to work, but can't get jobs, and this is a wonderful treat. Every man in the place got a meal that would cost two dollars anywhere else. Some didn't even have a nickel, but they were fed just the same. Old man Wrist used to be a carpenter, and 60 years ago, he laid the floor in this very room. Then he got old and couldn't work anymore, but his appetite seems to be all right. Hats off to this man who gave up his thanksgiving to make others happy. I wish there were more like him in this world. The German government has appropriated three million marks to aid these poor people who were forced to give up their homes and farms. Those that you see here are the first of the 10,000. Farms are being bought for some of them in Canada, where they will be given a new start in life with the help of the Red Cross. The others will settle in Germany. Who is this mysterious looking man? Can you guess? Perhaps you can remember the airplane that nearly ended his glorious career. Watch closely now for a terrific thrill. Over it goes and lands right in its back. Try to think who was inside of it. He wasn't hurt a bit. Well, did you guess it? Or did we fool you? No more big beer tummies, says German fashion. And that goes for men and women, too. Berlin has started the fad of slim waistlines. And look at all the different machines they're trying out. Some of them look as if they've got a long way to go. This girl is using a real rib tickler. If she doesn't look out, she'll break in half. 
there's nothing like doing a job thoroughly. If there's anything they forgot, I'll never guess what it is. Here's a happy bunch of men going home to stay after 10 years away from their loved ones. They were very near home all the time, but they might have been a thousand miles away for all the good it did them. It's a fine thing to see that all traces of the Great War are gradually disappearing. Now the townspeople can take a walk through the gate without having a sentry stop them. Look at the way this officer salutes his general. Great soldiers, these Belgians. Only a few hours now, and they'll be back home. Imagine their feelings. 10 years is a long time. Look at those flags. The soldiers had hardly gone when out came the decorations. There wasn't a drop of beer left in town the next morning. Looks like a real greyhound of the sea, doesn't she? Her seven sisters will be finished soon, and each one of these cruisers can go 35 miles an hour. Let's hope her guns will never bark in anger, but if they do, you can bet they'll shoot straight. You have to be an expert to understand how this can happen and nobody get hurt. But it's true. The baby thinks it's all fun and doesn't know that he's getting more currents than he'd find in a pot full of jam. He ought to grow up to be a tightrope walker on a third rail. He thinks his grandpop's the funniest man. What other boy's granddad can light lamps on top of his head? But that's not all. See that big spark jumping out of his bald spot? No wonder he hasn't any hair. I often wondered where all the bunny fur comes from to make powder puffs and trim baby's clothes. Each rabbit is good for a pound a year, which sells for $12. So if you want to get rich, start being a bunny barber. The fur is also put on those Easter candy rabbits. In other words, one rabbit loses an overcoat and the other gets one. remembers having one of these banks when they were kids. Which one did you have? And wouldn't you like to have it back again? This exhibition was put on by an enterprising bank and is a great collection of mechanical coin savers. They all worked perfectly and they'll swallow money as fast as you can give it to them. I had one when I was a boy and how I used to try to shake pennies out of it when I wanted to buy some peanuts. Now watch this ornery mule throw the jockey over its head. I wonder if that's what they call bucking the bank. Poor old China is having her troubles. This remarkable picture shows men who were rich merchants and who lost everything they had. They blame the nationalist government for this and are listening to some fiery speeches. This gives you an idea of how the rebels cleaned out everything in the stores. Looks like Coney Island, doesn't it? This man isn't telling them to cut their heads off, but is trying to conduct a hardware business outside.
looks just the same, doesn't he? The 1928 presidential candidate Al Smith is a big hotel man now, and he's helping to open a new one in Miami. As soon as he got there, they gave him a ride on a fast motorboat that must have been driven by a taxi driver. Watch it come right up to us. Look out! But it didn't bother Al at all. He's used to dodging New York traffic. You'd never think of looking inside this boat for a pie factory, would you? But it's got the biggest one in the Navy. These boys are all expert pastry cooks, and this is Mince Pie Day. They made 400 of them. That sounds a lot, but don't forget, the Lexington carries 1,400 men. The boys got so hungry, they started a pie-eating contest, but some of them ate too fast and started to sink. Look at this one. He's bucking a heavy sea, mates. Prohibition fireworks seem to be popping like a lot of corks out of homebrew bottles. General Edwards told the audience that we ought to have laws enforced by ballots and not by bullets. A big crowd that couldn't get in waited outside the hall and gathered around this side. I wonder how it's all going to end. Like the Rhine, the beer flows on. Think of Germany and you think of beer. Here's a typical garden where families meet for their daily dozen. This old fellow seems to be thoroughly enjoying himself. Dr. Shoda, a hair specialist, is telling the delegates a lot of inside stuff about the care of the scalp. These girls are from the Imperial Palace where they attend the royal family. Here are some samples of the latest styles for court ladies. The society women of Japan must have her top knot, and believe me, no sailor could ever hope to tie it. We used to call it a bun, didn't we girls? This model has her hair done up in high school style, and here's the wedding headdress for the blushing bride. The chandelier wave, I call it. Mr. Hoover is giving all the kids a treat by letting them have a look at the President of the United States. Mrs. Hoover was to have come out too, but she was ill. They're supposed to roll eggs on the lawn, but with all these youngsters chasing around, the place would soon look like an omelet. I think Mr. Hoover's very nice to let that gang in. I'll bet he has to plant a lot of grass seed after they've gone. And now for a thrill. This is an observation balloon, a relic of the World War. It's been giving information to the enemy, and the airmen are out to get it, and get it good. The planes are closing in on him fast. Firing has started. The gunners have found the range. Straight for the balloon they speed. The observer leaps for his life, and not a moment too soon. A swift charge, and now, 
a burst of flame, and she struggles like a wounded bird. Another honor for the world's most famous man. This time, the special gold medal authorized by Congress in recognition of Lindy's many contributions to aeronautical science. After a brief ceremony, they all went to the president's camp for the weekend. I wonder if they mailed any postal cards back. For about $4.98, Bill Schwartz and Jim Slatter are eligible for membership in the Deep Sea Divers Club. With a few sash weights for ballast and a length of shower bath hose, it's a cinch. A bicycle pump furnishes more or less fresh air, and Bill gets a taste of the wonders of the sea with its fierce whales and swordfish. It's a deed that'll live forever. Furious pumping delivers ozone to the brave adventurer. Eight feet below the surface of Stone Harbor, tender hands bring him to the top after his daring exploit. And all for $4.98. Now they're learning how to be valets for high society hounds, about the only job left that women haven't attempted. They're put through a regular course of training in all its canine branches so that they can prepare a dog to look his best for the kennel shows. Talk about leading a dog's life. He's getting as much attention as though he were a real baby. But the fun begins at feeding time. You know the old saying, far fields are greenest? And before you can look around, there's a battle in the making. But the riot is put down in short order, and peace reigns once more. I don't know whether the dogs make the girls look prettier, or the girls make the dogs seem uglier. It's a toss-up. The race of the century. Deadly rivalry is shown by the daring pilots. Pierre Monk of France. Whoop! Steady! Stay with it, old-timer. And then Tony Monk of Italy, impatient and just raring to go. Sam Monk of the USA and his observer. Seems to be a war going on. And finally, John Monk of Great Britain, bawling out the navigator. At the start, there they go! Great Britain and America on the first lap of the furious race against time. And then France gets going. After a lot of monkey business, a regular Lindbergh of the jungle. The only ape to do a tailspin in a balloon. The prize goes to the one staying up the longest. And now, Italy takes the air. I hope they come down soon, or else there'll be lots of organ grinders out of a job. The principle is that the grooved roller revolves in the opposite direction to the wheels of the car. It seems to work in the model. Now we'll try it with a dummy. Well, that looks okay. Now for the real thing. Whoop, there he goes. He's got a lot of faith, but he's trying to decrease the number of auto accidents. 94,000 last year in England alone. That's a great invention. October 29th, 1929, Black Tuesday. The New York Stock Exchange is in a panic. Frantic investors have scrambled to unload their stocks at any price. Everyone wants to sell, no one wants to buy. Suddenly, even the most gilt-edged securities are practically valueless. The stock market crash has come, and the Great Depression has begun.
These have been some of the highlights of the year 1929. We've seen how peace and prosperity are the engines driving the world. World War I is fading into history as Germany celebrates its decade of democracy and nations disavow war. But the stock market has crashed in America and dictators are on the rise in Europe. 1929 becomes the end of an era. In 1930, the Great Depression will begin taking its terrible toll on America and the world.